Hi. I'm inside the polytunnel, as you might be able to tell, and it's absolutely boiling in here, and I'm sweltering. I hope the sound is okay. Everybody's doing everything out there today. We've had like a gap in the rain, and people are up here with mowers and strimmers. Someone's got a chainsaw over there, um, and we've even got aeroplanes going over the top. So I hope the sound's all right. I apologise if there's a problem with it. Um, so yeah, basically I'm hiding in here for two reasons. Firstly, because it's pretty nippy outside, but secondly, we had a blight warning this morning. Um, I'll put the link to the UK Blight Watch um, website underneath. I mean, it's no, there's nothing to, to buy on it or anything. It is literally just you register for emails from them and they send you an email telling you if there's been blight spotted in your area. Um, well anyway we got an email about it this morning to say it's happened not very far away from us so I've got a lot of tomatoes to pick which is the first thing to do I'm also going to go around and just take off any foliage that looks even remotely dodgy but I'm just looking around there's not too much damaged foliage in here but I'm just going to take absolutely everything off blight is a major problem so last year was the first year that I've really ever grown tomatoes outside uh, other than on like window ledges and things in flats with no gardens but I mean up here on the allotment when we've always had the greenhouse or we've had various guises of poly or cover or something like that I've always grown them indoors and last year um, because I started taking cuttings from all the different varieties we were growing we just had too many for indoors so we started whacking them out into the beds and because they were cuttings they were quite a lot later than the ones that I'd grown from seed and that meant that they were just really quite far behind they were at least sort of three months behind the rest and just as they were starting to produce really really massive tomatoes and they were absolutely covered in fruit the blight hit the tomatoes that were in the polytunnel lasted about another two months before the blight got them but the ones outside were really uh, quick to go down with it basically so as you know this year I've got some inside and I've got basically a whole bed of tomatoes on the outside so I'm going to check the ones in here first and then go out there and check them but I've got my fingers crossed so this isn't blight damage I'm taking off this is burn um, when the leaves were wet we had it really humid in here just before some really hot weather and it got damaged and now it's just curled over but because i'm on serious blight watch i'm just taking off anything like i said so uh, anything that's looking slightly dodgy which will increase airflow but it'll also make it easier for me to spot when something does go wrong you see these ones that's not blight either but I'm taking it off all the same. So not only am I uh, clipping off all the foliage that looks a bit dodge, any areas where the foliage is really clumped together, I'm gonna prune that out too, because you wanna keep as good airflow as you can really around the plants. So they're also gonna get a bit of a haircut. You can see by now we've got some really really bare stems at the bottom and these leaves are another one that's been burnt they were pretty much stuck to the plastic on the outside with the water and then got burnt from the sun you can see higher up on the plant they're really healthy we've got loads of tomatoes still left in here it would be such a shame if this is hit we've got these ones over here which uh, don't look that clever really but having said that, a couple of the plants in here have been producing leaves like this all season um, and it doesn't appear to have sort of spread to anybody else so I'm not sure what it is but it's coming off. So we've got a lot of bare stems now. Um, as we're coming to the end of the season I'm going to take off a bit of this up here. Uh, basically the aim of the game is to increase airflow and I'll just get rid of all of this. But have a look at this guy. I mean, look at the size of this. It'd be such a shame if this doesn't ripen because it's a monster. It's basically a melon. Huge, huge. And we've still got loads of the wonderful garnet. This is a really, really slow job.
mainly because there's quite a lot of eating to do. So this is the sun gold, just kind of working its way up. It's still got so much coming on it. God, I really hope it doesn't just get obliterated. Look, still flowering away. I mean, if we don't get the blight and we don't get hit, we've got a chance. So these are the outdoor guys. These are the ones that are way, way more vulnerable. We've got one Roma. This is the first one, which is quite exciting. Don't have any Roma growing in the greenhouse because we got them after I'd already planted them up in there. But yeah, you can see we've got masses of unripe tomatoes out here. But I'm having a look around. I can't see anything that looks like blight. So fingers crossed. outside today I cannot believe it's still August there is a distinct feeling of autumn in the air I'm hoping it's just temporary but it's jumper weather and leaves are starting to look a bit yellow mm. I'm not ready for autumn <laughs> I mean I genuinely genuinely love all four seasons so although we have to put up with some shitty weather sometimes um, having that spring summer autumn winter progression um, is something that I really really appreciate but <laughs> this has been a weird year on so many levels and really I'm just not ready for summer to be over I'm not ready I'm just going to make a cup of coffee and uh, I'll show you what I mean. So how autumnal is this? Having a fire. Having a fire to keep warm as well as um, we've got some bits and pieces that need burning. Generally we try and compost everything and the stuff that we can't compost like sticks and stuff we do tend to try and just leave in corners for bugs. but. Uh, when we've got really diseased stuff, so we've got soil borne disease in particular, things like the club root, we do burn all of that. Because if you then put soil borne diseased matter into your compost bin, it, you're just spreading it across the whole allotment. So it's into the fire. need to stop moaning about how cold it is but I'm just really surprised like we've had grey days for what two weeks now but it hasn't actually been chilly today it's chilly and it's the August bank holiday I mean this has got to be a record surely I mean August bank holiday has got a bit of a you know renown for being a bit crap weather but not genuinely cold mm. Basically all I'm doing is hiding in the polytunnel and eating tomatoes today. Um, I'm in here under the pretense of um, having a good think about what we're going to grow in here over the winter. This is the first year that we're going to have this polytunnel because I uh, built it in, what was it, about March, April time. Uh, Mum's strimming in the rain and there's aeroplanes going over which is a bug up. It's not very good for Town. Sorry about that. Battery's gone. It's quite early and and uh, 
I brought the drill up with me today because I've got to um, fix a few more planks to the front of the compost heap. Um, we're getting to that stage now where a lot of stuff is being either taken out or thinned out or any of that so um, there's a lot of growth going into the compost bins and at this stage when you're putting it in and it's like just fresh matter it's huge so I've got to build up the sides again and then obviously it will sink down over time but um, to begin with it now it's just piled up so I'm going to stick a few more planks on the front of there and it's actually a magnificent morning it's been crappy weather for well it must be about two weeks now and the sun's shining it's just wonderful so I'm gonna have my cup of coffee in the sunshine and then get on with something I mustn't forget to take the biscuits out mum doesn't like it when there's no biscuits with the coffee <laughs> Okay, this is the compost bin at the moment. They're a bit ropey. And can you see the three panels at the bottom? Well, firstly, the compost mat is just building up like crazy in here. But these three panels that I've got at the bottom were from the frontage of an old bin we had and they don't actually fit across it. So they were just temporary about three months ago and I actually haven't got around to replacing them yet. So what I'm gonna be using is this piece of OSB board which is what um, we used as the base for the metal shed where we keep the netting we just had this strip left over I mean the compost bins are a real kind of scrap heap challenge make do and mend scenario anyway they're just from a couple of pallets that um, we got from the school next door so I'm not worried that it's gonna look a bit dodge so I need to hold the compost in <laughs> I've decided to take off the lower planks that sort of um, don't actually fit um, and replace them with the bottom because obviously as the compost builds up the weight is going to be much greater at the bottom and if these pop off which is likely because they're not very well secured um, that'd be really annoying so I'm just going to swap them over because they'll be under a lot less pressure at the top they're really just a bit of support rather than having to hold anything in. So that should do that. You can see they're really rotten. <laughs> Not much good for anything, but they'll be all right for, you know, for the time being, as all of this lot builds up. So we've got a bit on the outside here from where rats have tunneled in and they push out the compost as they're going in. But I tell you what, I don't want to speak too soon haven't seen a rat since I told you about them. They've just vanished. 
Sunday and what else would I be doing except making bug spray? I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago I washed all of the brassicas that are in the brassica cage with water and a bit of soap. Well that did loads, the, the white fly was really really reduced from that but what I am going to do is spray it with garlic. Uh, so I'm just going to put some garlic in the blender. Because they've already been damaged quite a lot, the leaf surface with the aphids or the whitefly, there's a lot of kind of a sticky sooty mould gets attracted to the sap from the aphids. And so I'm going to put a tiny bit of tea tree in the mix just because um, it's pretty good for clearing that. I sprayed some on the brassicas that are in another bed and it worked a treat. I'm going to whiz up the garlic in the food processor with the water and then strain it because if you just whiz it up and put it straight in the bottle when you're using a sprayer it clogs up the nozzle so you've got to really strain it out. Because it's being strained out I'm not even going to bother peeling the garlic I'm just going to put it straight in like this two cloves and about mm, 200 300 ml of water You want to whiz it until the water has gone like a milky colour and there's plenty of froth. Then it's just tip it out into the strainer and then rinse your jug out with a little bit more water. You probably want to end up with about 350, maybe 400 mils of water. Um, just you can tip it through the sieve you know just to wash a bit more juice through push some of this foam through and then a couple of drops of tea tree oil so that's it really I'm just going to put that in uh, old you know, kitchen spray bottle and got the plot. So I'm going to go get them. So I'm going to give these guys a really good spray. The white fly generally live on the underside of the leaf. So when you're spraying, just make sure you're turning the leaves right over and giving them a good, good go on the other side. Otherwise they're living under there quite cushy and protected. This is a Kalex that I'm starting with, and then these are the Brussels sprouts. And apart from the white fly, they are actually looking pretty good. Happy Bank Holiday Monday. It is the very last day of August today. I can't believe it. It's been so quick. It's incredible, isn't it? Last summer, we had a clock on the side of the shed and completely inexplicably, somebody nicked it. And they didn't just like rip it off and run away with it. They actually unscrewed it and took it, uh, which was pretty annoying actually. But uh, I bought another one. It's just one of these jobs. It does have a temperature thing on the back. It is broken, not particularly worried about the temperature thing. Um, this was an absolute bargain because it was broken and it was a really strange kind of cream color. So I just covered it in a bit of hammerite and I'm gonna stick it on the side of the shed.
So, tomato blight warning. I know the other day I said that we had had a blight watch email to say that there's blight in the area. Well, just up there, the chap on the top, his tomatoes outdoors and indoors have both got it. There's a girl up that side, her tomatoes are all gone. Okay, it's hit. Just came over to have a check. I mean, it was inevitable because just on the other side of that little fence at the back there, hers has got blight. You can prune out blight, you know, um, to try and uh, prolong the life of the plants, but it's right in the stems of these. And I think if we don't take the tomatoes off, we're going to lose all of them. So if we're taking the tomatoes off, we may as well take the plants off. And we don't really want them here with the wind blowing, increasing the risk of our tomatoes getting it faster in the polytunnel. So we're just going to clear the whole bed out. It's a shame, um, but actually quite a lot of these tomatoes are either nearly ripe or they are on the turn, which means if they haven't actually got blight inside the fruit, we've got a pretty good chance of being able to ripen them at home. But like these ones, you see these guys, their stem is black and you can see that the, the flesh is blistered. That means the blight's actually in the tomato, so these are goners. But yeah, we're just going to clear the bed. It's sad, but that's the way it goes. Just means we can get the green manure in earlier, I suppose. Think about it that way. And that is it. Tomato bed cleared. Well, by the time this video comes out, which will be tomorrow because it is Monday evening, um, it will be September, which is quite something really, isn't it? So I was pretty sure that we were gonna get blight because it does come around our area every single year uh, it's normally later than this, but I mean, we have had the most incredible steamy, humid weather, which is just basically like blight paradise. So I'm surprised it's taken us this long to get it. But now I'm on that awkward situation where we've stripped the plants outside and they're gone, but the ones in the polytunnel haven't got it yet. So now it's a waiting game, which is really awful. And I don't know whether to get the tomatoes off early, the ones that look like they could ripen, or whether just to risk it. Oh God, too many decisions, it's too difficult. Mm. So we stripped those tomatoes that are outside, as you saw. We've basically got a combination of three types. We've got beautiful big trusses like this, uh, which are totally green, but I'm pretty confident we'll be able to ripen them up. We've also got the Roma. We just had the three plants outside and so far we had picked a grand total of one red one. So they're all green. But we do have quite a quantity of them. So we've got high hopes that we'll be able to ripen these ones up. The ones that I think are just gone are the Black Russian and the Bulgarian. The first wave of the outdoor large tomatoes, the big beef steaks, had actually ripened and gone red and we'd taken them off. And it was the second wave that were coming and they just haven't got big enough. And that's only the outdoor tomatoes. It's gonna be a lot more if it goes all wrong in the polytunnel. So anyway, yeah, please, uh, down below in the comments, any green tomato or links to any green tomato recipes that are particularly good. So yeah, that's the first thing, blight hit in August, um, it happens. So on to September. As I said before, uh, I don't think it was this week's, you know, last week's vlog, I was sowing uh, chard, spinach, spring onions, that kind of thing to go in the poly house when the tomatoes come out. Um, and then I also mentioned this week that um, the chard was got by aphids. Have a look how curly it's gone because of the aphid damage. Yeah. 
they really uh, had a bit of a bit of a poor start in life, but they'll be fine. They'll recover. I'm not worried about them. Uh, the spring onions are just starting to pop up, which is quite exciting. But I'm not going to just continue sitting out here drinking and chatting shit to you. I promise. Mm. I am going to say pinch punch first of the month, no returns, for tomorrow because this is coming out on the 1st of September. Um, I do have a bit of news. Uh, my old job, which had completely evaporated, has sort of re-emerged in uh, a slightly different guise. It's going to be quite different post-Covid, but it's back. Reality does have to come back into it and um, a bit of money would be incredibly helpful about now. So yeah, it's positive, but it does mean the vlogs are going to have to change slightly. So what I'm going to try and do is trial a kind of a three day vlog as opposed to doing all six days because I won't be able to get up to the allotment um, every single day. Even though the work is coming back, I'm totally going to continue doing these vlogs because I've absolutely loved it and I really, really love all you lot and your comments and engagement has just been unbelievable. But anyway, what I was saying was if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. It means so much. And if you haven't already and you enjoyed the video, do subscribe. Um, next week like I say slightly different format but I'm going to do my best to continue vlogging ah one more thing um it seems you're such an incredibly valuable resource for um, information about these things I am just putting together a list of lettuce varieties or salad varieties that I want to grow over winter I've got a couple I've got arctic king and there's one called all year round I'm also going to be growing lamb's lettuce and what's the other one? Land cress. If anybody's got any varieties that they found have done particularly well over winter, I would really love to know. Please uh, let me know below if you've got any suggestions because this is going to be the first year that we've really been able to properly grow in the polytunnel over winter. So yeah, just let me know below. If you're interested in knowing any more about our plot or what we've been up to, um, I do quite a lot of writing at the moment on the blog, which uh, I will, this is gonna be new for me, but I am going to attempt to get it to appear above me now. <laughs> That'll be embarrassing if it doesn't work. So yeah, all I'm gonna say is cheers. I'm getting a bit low on that, but, <laughs> but I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you next week.